Scott McKnight, postdoctoral fellow at the Monk School of Global Affairs in Toronto. He focuses on Chinese politics and the economy. Scott, you have been a great guest over the past two and a half years as this never-ending story is played out here. My first question, when will the Chinese release those two Canadian men? Ooh, okay. <laughs> first of all, uh, good afternoon, Todd. Thanks for having me on again. Uh, that is the big question, of course, now. But today we should recognize this is a major positive development in Canada-China relations overall, that two-plus years, nearly three-year stalemate and indeed deterioration of relations may finally be at its end. Now, we all wait here as Canadians for the release of the two Michaels. Let's maybe hold our breath on that. The Chinese government will very likely defer, delay, throw out a few uh, explanations that have nothing to do with Meng Wanzhou's release. And, but ultimately, though, the outcome we all hope is the release of the two Michaels. On that note, we should also be a little bit, uh, temper our expectations a little bit. The charges uh, that Meng Wanzhou is, of course, confessing to now are financial related, relating to Iranian sanctions and whatnot. The two charges against the, t the two Michaels, however, were related to espionage, a far more serious crime. The Chinese government may have to delay a little bit here uh, before just uh, letting go of the two Michaels, if indeed that's what they end up doing. As you know, it's often very much about saving face for the Chinese government. And so in this situation, for them to actually release those two men, let's say in the next couple of days, uh, highly unlikely, as, as, as you've been pointing out here, uh, because they've long said, no, there's no linkage. These men are uh, you know, arrested, charged uh, on, on spying. So, you know, the fact that they were picked up soon after Miss Meng, there is really no linkage here. I mean, very few people actually believe that. But for the Chinese, in order to make that story credible, they're going to have to buy a bit of time before they let those Canadian men go, if they let them go. You're absolutely right, Todd, that there will be some theatrical performance here, uh, different types of statements coming out from the Chinese government, as you said, denying any connection between the two. But again, re returning to that, maybe that 5,000-foot level, the key point here is that Meng Wanzhou, who's really the key to open all the doors, to bring Canada-China relations back to some degree of normalcy, that key we now finally possess. And I think that's the key point for today, especially given that this was a, quite a shocking revelation, uh, uh, you know, a, a bit of a bombshell. Uh, but the positive sign here is that Canada-China relations now at least has a path moving forward in a positive direction. And that, of course, now must rely on the release of the two, uh, two Michaels at this point. You know, Scott, this has been a major political headache for uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau from the very beginning. Uh, he has been accused by China, uh, of, you know, of basically being a lapdog and a lackey to the United States. Uh, he's also been under fire by, you know, some here in Canada for being, as they see it, pushed around by China and the U.S. and letting those two Canadian men sort of waste away in a prison. How much of this do you think has to do with the presidency in the United States, Joe Biden now, instead of Donald Trump? And what, what did that do to sort of the equation? Uh, I think it was a variable, a factor in this bigger relationship. Uh, but I think we should really focus on the, the trajectory, the course of Meng's trial itself. Clearly, uh, that there was issues within the de within their defense, within their arguments, that it wasn't going in the path that uh, they had anticipated, and ultimately that brings us to this final outcome, this uh, you know today's confession, fine, and, and ultimate release. Uh, the Biden administration was a positive sign for the two Michaels for Canada's cause to show that uh, this great superpower was indeed on our side and pushing. Uh, for the release, pushing for a return to normalization in the, in, in, in Canada-China relations and bigger triangular relations, Canada-China and the U.S. But again, it was very much more about uh, the, the course of Meng's uh, trial itself, which uh, was not going in, in her favor. What, what's the takeaway here? I mean, after this legal psychodrama that's still not over yet, I mean, you know, to try and make sense of it, Scott, make heads or tails of it is, is challenging. Yeah, I think we should uh, use this this last two plus years as a maybe a bit of a wake up call. Let's be honest, uh, in terms of what we as Canadians or as Western countries, more broadly speaking, can expect from China going forward. This is a more assertive China, a China that isn't afraid of using a, a, an array of instruments like hostage diplomacy, like economic blackmail. This uh, and going it alone as well, right? Despite uh, the, the widespread Western uh, criticism of China's policy uh, of, of essentially taking these two Michaels as retaliatory actions, 
I think we should be very cautious in uh, our assessment going forward that this may be the type of China that we're going to have to deal with going uh, going forward as China only becomes increasingly relevant uh, and economically powerful in the world. Is there also an argument to be made that, that Canada sort of stood up to a bully, that we did not release Miss Meng, that we let the legal process play out, that a deal seems to have happened now with the United States and then that you know, allows Canada to let her go, but there was a lot of pressure on the government over the last couple of years to, you know, get rid of her, send her back, forget about these international agreements we have, uh, you know, prioritize those two Canadian men, um, basically flout, you know, the international justice system. Uh, there is something that, that, that there was a consistent policy line, a consistent rhetorical uh, line from the Trudeau government that indeed the courts would let it play out. And that is where we are today with this, you know, final outcome that may or may not be surprising depending on who you are. Uh, there is something valid to be said about that right there. Um, but we should also recognize here the bigger, maybe broader lesson, which is a more assertive China, a China that's not afraid to use various instruments, some nice, some not so nice, uh, in trying to achieve its its policy aims, in this case, the release of Meng Wanzhou. Uh, this, this should be a sobering moment for, for uh, Canadian expectations of the People's Republic of China. Yeah, I think it will be for many Canadians. Scott, always wonderful to have you with us. Walk us through it, bring in your analysis and your insights. Thank you. Thank you very much, Todd.